Welcome to Chandwell. My name is Michael and in this series I am making a large Victorian hotel for the back of my station. In part 3 I showed you how I made the largest part of the hotel, the 43cm long back face. In part 4 I'm going to show how I made one of the smallest parts. This entrance for the station concourse is only 27mm tall. Because this wall adjoins the existing station building, I designed the first floor windows to match the size and spacing of those already in place. The building has a recess in between each window, so I needed to use two layers of half millimetre card for this. I stuck the outlines to an offcut from the last building that was just the right size. By adding a small patch of stone texture onto the bottom layer just behind the hole in the top layer, I can get the effect that I want. I cover the top layer in texture using PVA glue. I use thin beads for this but I spread it closely together. The aim is to get the texture stuck as evenly as possible so that the paper does not bubble once the varnish is applied later. I know that some of you have experienced card curling or warping if you use PVA. This is something that's never happened to me. I don't know if it's due to the card I'm using, the glue or even the paper, but this dries flat without me having to apply any weight. I wrap the edges around the recess hole first and then use PVA again to apply the top layer onto the bottom layer. Once that's in place, I wrap the sides of the windows and the large hall where the entrance will be. When placed next to the station, it does look like I'm on the right lines. When I approach any build like this, I start in the free software Inkscape and use simple shapes to map out my thoughts. I knew the dimensions of the gap that I needed to fill and the overall size of the doors. I took care to keep everything symmetrical and I eventually ended up with five layers which when dropped onto the elevation of the building it looked like they would work well. The whole structure is only going to be 27mm high and only viewed through the station entrance arch so I didn't have to make this incredibly detailed. I just used simple lines to add a little detail to the woodwork. A passable 3D moulding effect can be achieved by simply adding a lighter line above the dark lines here. A slight 3D effect can be added to the text of the sign by adding a dark version of the text behind and to the right and a lighter version behind and to the left. Once coloured and tested on screen, I copied the components and prepared them for printing. For parts like the light blue front column, I needed to remember to make the printed layer wider so that the print would wrap around the card substructure. During this build, the Cyan cartridge in my printer has indicated it's about to run out, so I've ordered a new one. The cost for cartridges varies between £11 and £16. This one was £11.74 today. Printer ink is the biggest cost of this kind of scratch building. Over the last 12 months, I've replaced the cartridges 10 times at a total cost of £133.72. This is just a shade over £11 a month and considering I've made three bridges, a couple of roads, a factory, a pub, my entire back scene, the station canopy and the station buildings, along with various school homework projects for three children, I think it still represents quite good value. The doors are going to be photo paper stuck onto acetate from a chocolate cakes wrapping. I need a sharp blade to cut the window openings cleanly, so I opened a new Swan Morton 10A blade. These blades have a fine point, which I find perfect for this type of scratch building. I buy these blades on eBay in packs of 100 and they work out at just under 14 pence each. I've printed the glazing onto sticky label, which I apply to cake box acetate. I then crisscross the window frames with the sharp blade and tease out the resulting rectangles to leave glazing in fine blue frames. I use tiny amounts of PVA to then stick the doors that I cut earlier onto the acetate and I am left with some glazed blue doors with fine frames that are only a quarter of a millimetre thick. With my components stuck onto half millimetre card and all cut out, it's time to start arranging the entrance. I stick the acetate doors to a piece of supporting card to give it some rigidity. Next, I add each of the inner side panels. I do this by eye by lining them up with the pre-drawn tiled floor. I use a couple of offcuts stuck into place with PVA to hold them into place. Using more PVA, I add the door component onto the newly assembled floor and side panels. There's going to be no internal detail on the entrance, but I wanted the windows to appear as if they had depth. To achieve this, I applied black paint to the back of them, and when applied, it makes it look like there is a dark space behind the window. It is especially effective on the door windows. I decided not to use a pen to colour the white edges of the exposed paper, as they lend a little definition to the frames that I think works well. 
I did, however, use a little blue paint to colour the exposed card edges of the side panels and the front piece. The colour does not have to be an exact match, as the component will only ever be glimpsed at a distance through the station concourse. Once glued into place and the blue edging touched up, the entrance is starting to look good. I made the fascia out of two pieces of card. I made the outer layer slightly wider and taller than the inner one, so that it overlaps the building facade slightly. I glued a paper cover layer around this, and then applied three layers of card to add thickness to the column before folding the paper around it to make it look solid. I stuck the facade to the entrance and held it in place with a couple of clamps and a paint pot. I glued a 2mm wide piece of half mm card along the top of the facade so that when I add the name board, it is angled downwards slightly. Once the name board was added, the angled effect was subtle but noticeable. I finished it off by adding a final piece of 2mm wide blue strip along the top, just for a bit of relief. Once I held the completed wall in place on the layout, I realised that there was no room for much overlap of the wall on the right hand side. I had made the entrance a couple of millimetres too wide, so I'd have to slice off this end. I did this freehand and just hoped for the best. Thankfully, this approach seems to have worked well and it looked good when flush against the wall of the existing building. There is, however, a scale foot and a bit gap between the station concourse and the hotel entrance that visitors to Chandwell will just have to jump over. I contemplated fixing this, but since the entrance will only ever be viewed through the station's entrance arch, I don't think that this will ever be noticed, so I decided to leave it as is. After a final check, it was time to glue the module into the wall. I did this with the wall in place on the layout, so that I could be sure that it was all aligned properly, and wiggled it all into place. I left it there while the glue set, and gave it a quick test to be sure that it all looks aligned. I'm really happy with the result. This was a quick build, and I'm thrilled with how it's turned out. I'm now 37 days into the hotel project. The hotel entrance took six and a half hours from starting the design to finishing the build, and it's taken the overall project effort to 49 and a half hours. This part of the build used mainly offcuts from the earlier parts, so I only used one sheet of copier paper, one A4 label, one sheet of photo paper, and a scalpel blade. This cost about 27 pence, and has taken the total cost of the build so far to four pounds and two pence. If you're finding this series enjoyable or useful, please press the thumbs up button for me, as this really does encourage me to carry on making these videos. I'll be completing this part of the building next, and hopefully joining it onto the main part of the building that I showed you last week. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.